So what should you do? Who should you know? Um, you should probably know your county judge, commissioner. You know who your local guy is. You should know your state house member, your state senator, your congressman, and your two state senators. Um, it is important. It is important that you get involved. It is important that you develop those relationships. Yes, I'm a lobbyist in Washington, and yes, I'm personally involved, and so I'm passionate about it, and I'm wandering the halls of Congress every day, and all of these people always want to ask me about all of my animals. So I have 15 acres outside of Washington and Virginia, and I raise birds. I have emus. I have goats. Goats have a guard dog named Moses. I have a big cicada tortoise that's like 90 pounds, and every time I go into a congressional office, we spend 45 minutes talking about friends and animals before we ever get to a topic. But what really matters is you, the voters, who are out there. So that when AFA calls you up and says, hey, we need y'all to call in or send an email or do those type of things, that's important. So get involved with your Chamber of Congress. You know, if you're a business owner or you're not a business owner, you're involved in the community. Charlie just became a board member of the local Chamber of Commerce. It's great. The pet industry is now represented in his local Chamber of Commerce. And believe me, when he goes to the meetings, people are going to ask him about you know, the birds and, and everything else. And that's an education process. And what we really need to do is educate people you know, and why that is important. And believe me, they're going to ask Charlie because they're going to see all the tattoos and everything else and go, why is he on the Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> you start going, you know, Greg Gaddis told me that I need to go into my congressman's office and sit and meet him. Well, how am I going to meet him? He's a big, important congressman. He's, you know, all of those type of things. Well, you got to start um, together. And you got to kind of start slow. Um, there are ways to look up things. So, GovTrack is a good website where you can look up bills and regulations. That. There's lots of websites out there. Lots of things and ways to do that. You should learn from different groups. There's great groups. The Calvary Group, if y'all have ever heard of the Calvary Group, I do a lot of work with them. They're basically a legal defense fund that you can join and, and if you get in some sort of trouble where animal control shows up on your doorstep, they have lawyers that will help you work through that and do those type of things. Animal Owner Worker, which I run, uh, HumaneWatch.org, and a lot of y'all love all of their, you know, their little snippets that they put out. They put out lawyers in cages and all of other types of things, but AFA and others. Um, and then be a part of a greater community. You know, you're all bird people here, but you need to reach out to your reptile friends, and you need to reach out to your small mammal friends, and your dog friends, and your cat friends, although I think the cat people are kind of creepy, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, but they're all a part of that um, community, and we need to work together. Y'all heard me say, you know, raising animals is both an art and a science, and, and these groups fight all the time. Well, I like to tell people we're all in the same arc together on this one. We're all, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all rowing towards the rights for us to keep our animals and house our animals, and, and you're right as a pet owner. And, and, Make no mistake, birds make awesome pets, and stop, stop apologizing for it. Don't get caught up in all of this rhetoric of they don't make awesome pets. They make just as awesome pets as dogs do. There are dogs that don't make good pets, right? Right. You know, make it fun. Show up as a diverse group. Go get your reptile friends with your bird friends and a dog person, and maybe somebody that raises horses or whatever else. Go meet at the local Applebee's. Have a beer, sit down and discuss what the local legislation is. And then make an appointment in your congressman's office and show up together. Because it's a whole lot easier to do together. And when you show up, you look like this diverse group of people. You're a bunch of wacky animal people, but it's a diverse group of people and it makes it fun. It's very intimidating to go into a congressman's office for the average person because you think that, you know, somehow that they're better than you. They're not. I mean, here in New York, they're taking selfies of themselves and sending them out. I mean, you know, they're, you know, be fun. Make it, make it a fun activity. Um, like I said, include everybody. You know, make it. You know, it, I walked around the hall. Y'all probably saw me walking around. I just like to walk and listen to that. There's all kinds of people within this group, and y'all all have something to give, and you all have personal connections back to, back to 
congressional offices and chambers of commerce and, and those type of things. And educate people. You know, I spend 90% of my time just talking about my birds and my animals just to educate people what it is I do and why I love it, why I want to protect that right. So then go in, get a group together, meet with them, um, spend some time doing those types of things. Um, meet in person, listen, you know, when you go in, it's as much about telling people what it is that, that you're doing and those type of things as it is to listen to what's going on. You want to become a point of contact for them as well. So if a piece of legislation comes up, that they're going to sit there and call a Charlie and say, hey, Charlie, hey, this bird legislation came up. What can you tell me about this? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it, you know, those type of things. Once you start developing those relationships, one, it becomes fun, and two, it's important for what's going on. Follow up. You know, your mother always taught you this. Write a thank you. You know, call back. Don't just go in and check the box. You know, be involved. You know, show up. You know, all of these politicians, they all have local barbecues and everything else where they just want to meet and greet with constituents. Just show up. Spend five minutes. Shake their hand. Say, hey, you know, eat their free hamburger. You know, and sometimes you may have to show up to a fundraiser. So it costs you $100. The middle class, which you know we're talking about, is pet owners 1.8 billion in 2010 to 4.9 in 2030. You know, I'm an agriculture lobbyist, so one of the things I'll tell you as an agriculture lobbyist is in the next 20 years, um, we are moving from 7 billion people on this planet to 9 billion people on this planet, and we have to feed. And agriculture is always I'm doing my plug for agriculture. Agriculture has always been able to do that through the use of technology, going back to the Green Revolution, going back to everything else. But just to give you a perspective of how big, of how big an issue this is, we have to produce more food in the next 20 years than we produced in the last 5,000 combined. Think about that. Um, About, you talk about cage size. So the big, the big thing that's going on on cage size right now is y'all probably heard of the laying egg deal going on in California, right? So it sounds all fine and good. You know, bigger cages are always better cages. Well, not necessarily so if you think about it as a science perspective. So we picked a number out of the blue on cage size, where they did in California, to pass this, where they have to have scratch pads and they have to have all of this. Well, the science tells you that you're actually going to have more cannibalism and more disease problems and everything else with these new cages. And I had a good friend of mine when I first got to the Hill, when I first became a staff director, I, I went out to dinner with Sam and I said, hey Sam, can you give me any advice And as I move forward in this career for years? And Sam said something that always stuck in my head. He said, if it becomes about market share, run. Cage sizes in California is about market share. They passed a law. They said that they had to have bigger cages. They gave themselves an 18-year implementation date, so they don't have to put these, cage, these birds in, cage, in bigger cages for 18 years. And by the way, nobody else can come into the market and compete with them for 18 years. And we get to charge the consumers more for eggs. And it's not based on science. So my caution is this. Anytime you start putting things like cage size and legislation, you're avoiding science. Because as a scientist will tell you, what happens is if the science changes, if a bigger cage is better, or no scratch pad is good, or this is better, or whatever else, then you have to go change the law. That's a much bigger deal than trying to follow science. And so what's happened in California is about market share. And what's happened in the European Union, in pet shops and stuff, where you talk about cage size, is about market share. It's about who can do it and who can't. So, you know, and we know from birds, you know, if you're talking about breeding birds, sometimes, you know, I can take, I'm a good example. 
when I breed hyacinth macaws, I breed them in great big, huge cages. You know, 10 feet by 10 feet by 30 feet long. Give them all these freaking toys, give them everything else, and they just go out there and they play, 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 and they've never done a damn thing. Somebody that grew up in a trailer house and put them in a little bitty macaw cage in the back room, and they breed like rabbits. Why? I don't know. Some people will tell you this, that hyacinths, for instance, like a lot of security. And maybe in that back room, they have more security than they have with everything flying around and everything else. I don't know. Science isn't there. But I caution you on things like that because you need to follow the science and not necessarily. Yeah, but you're, you're speaking from a breeder standpoint. I'm speaking from a retail standpoint. So I'm talking about the people that you're giving the birds to. Right. Like I, I, mean, I, have a, I had a macaw that was in a two by two by two box, yeah. you know, sitting in, in, in some kind of store not being paid attention to until it was sold. Right. And to me, that's out, and that's animal cruelty, in my in my opinion. But you know, as a breeder, you're not keeping the bird for indefinitely. You're looking to, you know, hatch it and get it out of there. So as I'm just talking on a retail standpoint, because they can just pack that many more birds. In. Well. I will tell you this from, from a scientific standpoint. They won't do it for long. Because you'll get a disease problem in that store and they will be out of business. Well, it's the same thing with high since the best the breeding uh, the US captive community in the zoos are not having much success. But you talk to El Wahabra, which is a wildlife park in yeah, they don't want them to breed. They've turned them loose on the property and just know, leaving them alone. Like, they got too many now. They have another issue. I know like, Florida has continually proposed the invasive species, and the definitions are very broad. And I remember it was proposed in Congress, and the definition was so broad it would have. HR 669. Yes. Right. So you have to be careful of that. You, 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 declare what an invasive species is and everything else. I mean, almost anything could be declared as an invasive species. They could declare highs and macaws as an invasive species. I mean, it's technically true. I guess if you turn them up, up and loose, they would not get a feral population. I don't think it would last very long because people like me would be catching them, but, uh, you know. But, you know, the declaration of invasive species is such that you could be designed as a pet. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. Thank you.